Calling. Oh, I'm worn out trying to catch up with you. When they said you had been through the village, I couldn't believe it. Without calling on me? Where are you off to? Is this your sister's child? Well, who else's would it be? Goodness, she has grown. Come on, Heidi, we've a long way to go. Where are you taking her? To the old man. Up there in the crags. What do you want to take her to see him for? He's her grandfather. He never sees anyone. It's time he did his duty by her. What do you mean? You're not thinking of leaving her with him, are you? Date. I've had the keeping of her long enough, haven't I? It's time he did his share. He should have had her years ago when her mother died. Well, why not? Living up on a mountain with nothing to do all day? He's nothing to lose by looking after her. He's an old man. Now where's she got to? Heidi! over here and tell me what this is all about. I've been offered the most wonderful chance. There was a family came to stay at the hotel at Regatz where I was working as chambermaid. They took to me so much, Barbara. Do you know they've asked me to go and work for them? Well, just fancy. Ladies made to a rich family in Frankfurt. I'll never get such an opportunity again. I must take it. Aren't you hot? Very. You'd be cooler if you hadn't so much on. Wait a minute! <laughs> <laughs> well, can't you take her with you? You took her to regards. I left her in Mayenfeld with old Ursula. Well, can't you leave her there again? She won't have her. She's deaf, Heidi runs off on her own, and the old woman doesn't even know she's gone. Someone could be found. Someone I'd have to pay. And why should I? Heidi's not my child. When Adelheid died, Mother took her in because the old man had run off up here and there was no one else. Then Mother dies and I get landed with her. It's not fair. I'm 26. I'll never get a husband with Heidi on my hands. And if I'm even prevented from getting a good situation because of her... But can't you No. Take... She must go to her grandfather whether he likes it or not. What's that one called? Snowflake. That? Rainfish. Where do they all come from? The village. I pick them up in the morning and take them back in the evening. Heidi? Heidi? Hi, what a sight you look. Where are your clothes? Up there. Go and get them at once. I'll get them. What can have come over you? Your two frocks, your shawl, your new stockings, your shoes, your hat. Bring down her clothes. I doubt if the old man will even feed her properly. He hasn't a kind thought for anyone. Never sets foot inside a church from one year's end to another. And when he does come down to Dorfley once in a while to sell his cheese, as everyone clears out of his way. Hurry up! 
The mere sight of him's frightening enough. You can't leave a child with that heathen. If any harm comes to her, it'll be his responsibility. There's no time to put them on now. I'll carry them. Go on along the path. Good luck to you in Frankfurt. You know where the old man lives? Yes. Lead the way then, show us. Go on! Herr Brenner? Ah, good day to you, Herr Brenner. I'm Adelheid's sister. I know who you are. What do you want? I brought you to buy us an Adelheid's child. I don't expect you to recognize her. She was only a baby when you last saw her. What's she doing here? She is your granddaughter. So? She's your responsibility. I've done my duty by her these six years since my mother died. Now it is time for you to do yours. Don't teach me my duty, young woman. Get out, the pair of you. I'm going, yes. But the child stays here. Out, I said. Out! I had to put up with her when she was left on my hands. Now I have to go and earn my living in Frankfurt. If you cannot keep her yourself... I will have nothing to do with any child. Then arrange for her as you think fit. But if any harm comes to her, you will be answerable. I think you won't wish to add to the burden already on your conscience. Goodbye, Heidi. Your grandfather will look after you now. I will not. She's your own kin. Come back. Come back, you stupid woman. After her. Go on. You're going to be crying and whining after here. Go on. I don't much like her. She'd only take me to a town, and I hate towns. So you prefer the mountains, do you? What with the thunder crashes around the peaks, and the snow piles against the door? What do the goats find to feed on in the snow? There she goes, running down the path to the village. Barbara wasn't right. She must have left that child with the grandfather. Perhaps Peter will tell us more when he gets home. They'll have passed him and the goats if they were going up there. Fancy leaving a mite like that with the old man. What will become of her? Leaving a child here with me. She must be out of her senses. This is no place for a child. I think it's a lovely place. I told you you could poke your nose in there. May I? Not much room, is there? Not for your things, anyway. I don't have any things. So she left you here without anything, did she? Only my clothes, and I shan't want those anymore. And why not? Because I want to run about barefoot like the goats on their little legs. They don't have clothes. Now what are you staring at? Haven't you seen an old man before? Not with a beard like that. It's like a great bush. Hasn't anyone ever told you? I've been told many things, child. I've been told that I'm wicked 
that every misfortune that I've suffered, I've fully deserved. But no one's ever told me that I look like a bush. What I'm supposed to do with you. Might as well stay here tonight, but tomorrow, first thing, I take you down to Dorfley, find that stupid woman, and put you back where you belong. It's not the first time he's had a child to rear. Well, it was different with Tobias. Tobias was his own son. And that was 30 or 40 years ago. He didn't hate everyone then, as I've heard. He only hates everyone now because of what happened to Tobias. Well, it was an accident, wasn't it? He blames God for it. I remember the funeral. He was standing beside me. He cursed God. And away he went before the clods had even covered the coffin. Straight up the mountain that same night. Tobias meant everything to him. A child conceived in sin. You're very hard on him, Brigitte. Why not? Six years he's been up there. Not once, not once has he exchanged a word with us. <laughs> Peter will be here any minute. You could have spent the day with him. I don't want to see you again until sunset. All day with the goats. Your milk's ready. Just coming. I'm going to stick them in the hay in my bedroom and make it as pretty as the meadows. I can take them home in this. From Little Bear. What are you having? I've had mine. And don't you want any more? I don't have any more. Here, have some of my cheese. Oh, no, that's for you. He'd beat me if I had any of yours. Not if I gave it to you. Oh, look. Look at the great bird. Flying so high in the sky. Why is he making that croaking noise? It always does. Why? I don't know. Must be lovely to be flying up there so high. Where's it going to now? Home to its nest. Where's that? The other side of that ridge, I think. Can we go and find it? Try to. When you've had your dinner. Oh, I'm not hungry. Oh, I am. It's on fire. Look, Peter, isn't it beautiful? It's like that most evenings. It's not really on fire. Oh, it's going now. All this colour's going. What's happened? It'll come again tomorrow. Come on, we must go home. Is it like that most days? Most days. Will it be there again tomorrow, for certain? Yes. Tomorrow for certain. It's the rays from the setting sun. I couldn't see any sun. You could if you were on the peaks. It's the sun's way of saying goodbye to the mountains. He throws his best colors over them so that they won't forget him until the morning when he comes back. They're all the colors of the flowers then. Look what I brought home. I want to make my bedroom as beautiful as the mountainside. What happened to them? I don't like being tied up in a napkin all day. They were so pretty. In their own pastures, standing in the sun, take them away from their home and they wither. I'll never pick them again. Is that why the great bird was croaking? Was he trying to tell me? The great bird wasn't croaking at you. He was mocking the people who lived down in the valley, telling them all huddled together and gossiping. 
is telling them if you could only live in the mountains, you'd soon learn how to love one another. Do you love everybody, Grandfather? What? Peter says you don't love anyone but yourself and your goats and your old pipe. Says you don't even visit his mother and grandmother. They would only speak ill of me, bring it on the old woman. <laughs> Can you look after Hardy, Grandmother? I have to take the goats down to the village and it's pouring rain. Hardy, you say? Stay here till I get back. You'll drive by the fire. The rain's coming through your roof. Look, on the floor. Come to me, child. Take my hand. I'm worried about the rain. And there's a shutter flapping against the window that will drop off in a minute. Tell me what you look like, child. Do you take after your mother or your father? And what colour is your hair? Brown. Can't you see? Yes, I can see nothing. When the sun's out and the mountains are on fire with his light as he says goodnight to them, you can see then, surely. There will never be light enough for me, Heidi. Peter could mend that shack of theirs if he wasn't so lazy. He has the goats to look after. Not for long. It'll be winter soon. He's got to go to school tomorrow, and the goats stay at home in winter. And Peter, too? Not while he's at school. That's where he's going to go every morning from now on, down to Dorfley at school. You can't go to the mountains with him anymore. You could have helped me here instead. Then if Peter can't do it, it'll have to be you. What'll have to be me? You must take the big hammer and the long nails and mend the shutter first, then the roof. The grandmother lies awake all night, afraid it'll fall down. You must do it tomorrow. I must, must I? Before it's too late. The devil I will. You must! I'm not going to mend that old crone's roof. That's final. You've no need to be afraid anymore. You'll mend everything. Is it possible? Yes, I can hear it's a hammer now. Brigitte! Johan is mending the roof for us. She's outside getting water from the water butt. Ask your grandfather to come here. I don't want to thank him. Do you know who's on the roof? Heidi's just told me. <laughs> they want you to come in. I can find out for myself where the mending's wanted. They want to thank you. I know what they think of me without having to hear them tell me. You must come in. We'll see, we'll see. What a state it's got into. It's the child we should thank. It's Heidi who brought him here. I think she has been sent to us by God. Oh, it's not just the roof that's being mended this day, because... Here he is! Here he is! Where is that lad of yours? I think his mother's house gets into such a state. Fetch him, I'll give him a piece of my mind. But he's at school. At school? I wonder if they'll bang any sense into him there. Johan... Who does Heidi take after? My grandmother, mostly. I don't see Tobias in her anywhere. I can. I can see him in her. But you can't see anything, Grandmother. I can see that much, my child. And your grandfather should see it too, and give thanks to the good Lord. <laughs> you up to your pious old ways again, are you? Oh, perhaps, perhaps. been helping grandfather oh has he when he should have been at school please don't be cross he's gone to school now grandfather made him promise oh. i said to forget her only this morning perhaps heidi will come to us today and here you are grandfather wouldn't let me come before he was afraid i'd fall into a drift is he well what have you been doing up there well he's been making a big seat for us both by the fire <laughs> And a new cupboard for me, and wooden spoons, and a new bowl oh, for me. Oh, my child. It does me such good to hear a voice with so much happiness in it. <laughs> good afternoon, your hand. Don't you know me? Your pastor. May I come in? Long time, neighbor, since we met. 
the snow knee-deep across the path, the land as hard as iron, and you choose this weather to come up from Dorfley? <laughs> I must confess, if I'd known the conditions here, I'd have stayed at my fireside. It has been thawing for three days in the valley. What have you come up for? To call on you. If you're going to tell me that it's time I put my head inside a charge? Which it is. You know my mind on that. But that is not why I'm here. I've come about your granddaughter. What about her? Haven't you ever been to church, Heidi? I don't think so. Oh, if only your grandfather were not a godless man. He's a good man. But if he were not godless, he would also be a happy man. I think he's happy. If I could see, I would read to you one of the hymns from this old hymn book. This book's always kept on the cupboard shelf and no one ever gets it out. But Gitter's always so busy and Peter can't read at all. I know. He says it's much too difficult learning to read. He could learn if he tried. Then he could read me the hymns. Perhaps one day you will learn to read. Oh, no, it's much too difficult, Peter says. It would be such a comfort to me if I could hear one of those hymns again. The child is old enough, neighbor. No. She must be eight or nine by now, at least. I tell you, no. Why shouldn't she go to school? She can learn everything she needs from me. Can you teach her to read and write? I could if I thought it needful. I dare say I haven't lost the hang of it yet. The schoolmaster certainly has not lost the hang of it. I'm not sending her down to Doffley every day. A child of that age? You could always live down there. The old house where you lived with Tobias is still in Dorfley. The child could go to school every day from there. She'll grow up on the mountain with the goats and the birds. Don't you like the black bread? Somehow I cannot digest it. It gives me stomach pains. Since we cannot afford white bread, she doesn't eat much at all. Is that why you can't see? Oh, no, child. Perhaps if you ate white bread, it would make you strong enough to see again. You must have white bread. Papa gave me some wool to bring you. Saved herself the journey. We cannot expect them to go all the way up here in the winter, Brigitte. Let us be thankful they gave some to Peter to bring. Now I can start spinning again. Did you learn to read today, Peter? So you can read the hymns for Grandmother? I'll never learn to read. Perhaps if you tried very hard. You try! I don't go to school. Why not? If I have to go to school, why don't you? Peter. Come along, Heidi. It's snowing, and the way is hard enough as it is. Can I go to school one day so I can learn to read the hymns to Grandmother? How can you possibly go to school? It's down the valley. We're up in the mountains. Come along now. Now for this nonsense. I don't really want to go to school. It's just I'm so sorry for Peter's grandmother. Living in the dark with no one to read those hymns to her. You should go to school. They'll teach you things there that I can't teach you. Were they good things? Some would think so. Perhaps on the days you go down to Dorfley to sell your cheeses. Four times a year. If you go to school at all, it'll be every day. But it's too far away. It wouldn't be if we went down there to live. In Dorfley, a town? It's not a town, it's only a village. Anyway, we'd still be in the mountains. And you'd have friends of your own age there, other little girls. That's where you should be. I don't want to leave the mountain. Always come back here in summer. I don't want to live in Dorfley, do you? The great bird would mock us. You said the great bird mocked all the people that... Well, we think about it. Tomorrow. It'll be springtime soon. Then summer. Not even Peter goes to school in summer. Maybe next winter. Go down there, face them all. We shall see. Grandfather? Come on, little brown bear. All that lovely new grass to feed on. Uh. Hurry up! Coming! Don't give Peter all your dinner. Hi, one.
anybody here? Herr Brenner? What do you want? Ah, oh, there you are. Is Heidi about? Who is the child? Where is she? Why do you want to know? You've not forgotten she's my niece, I hope. Have you been looking after her properly? I hope you haven't been letting her run wild. She was tomboy enough when I had the keeping of her. Why have you come up here dressed up in your finery? Oh, I'd forgotten how rough it was on the mountain. My dress is quite spoiled. Speak up, woman. What do you want with us? You'll not have to be troubled with the child any longer. I've come to collect her. Collect her? There's a cart waiting in Dorfley now to take us to Mayenfeld, and from there we'll get the train to Frankfurt. I promised the carter we'd be at Dorfley by sunset, so I... Get out! Get out! Don't let me see you with your hat and your feather again. Go and be done with you! Oh! Don't think you can bully me. Everyone in Dorfley knows why I'm here, and they're all on my side. So if you don't let me have the child, they'll come up here and teach you a lesson for your barbarous ways. Get out of my house, I said! Not without my niece. I'm taking them up to the high pastures. You coming? Can't see the peak so well from up there. They won't tell me just yet. But they will by the time we get up there, won't they? Oh, all right. I'll pick you up on the way back. Come on, Snowflake. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'd like to stay here forever. They had this gentleman to dinner. I was waiting at table. Herr Sesamon, his name was. Get on with it. I heard him say he wanted a companion for his daughter, a sickly child called Clara. She's confined all day to a chair. That's town for you. She's been paralysed for years and she's very lonely. Anyway, I said to my mistress afterwards, I know just the child to amuse her. A simple, unspoilt child of an obliging disposition who won't put on airs or be difficult. From the way I described Heidi, they took to her at once. And the long and the short of it is they want me to bring her to them immediately. The devil you will. They're one of the richest families in Frankfurt. <laughs> Herr Sesamon is a banker. They live in the very best part of the town in a, in a splendid house with servants in the most beautiful rooms. Think what her prospects could be. If anything happened to their own daughter, and the poor thing is so frail she can't last long, well, by that time they'll have grown so fond of Heidi that they'll bring her up as their own. It's the most unheard of good fortune. Have you not done yet? Everyone in Dorfley agrees with me. Most people would give thanks to God for hearing of an opportunity like this. An opportunity, you call it? What can you offer her instead? More than money, servants, or the best part of Frankfurt. For a moment I was really afraid that you had something of value to give her, for then I would have had to agree, for Heidi's sake, for the kind of life I used to have. Go away, Fräulein. It'll be dark before you get to Dorfley. Goodbye, then. Heidi! Aunt Data! Come here quickly and put on your shawl. We're going on a visit. Visit? Where? Your grandfather knows all about it. He's given me your clothes. Now, put on your socks. Where are we going? Don't argue. There's no time to be lost. We have to catch a train at Mayenfeld.
Where's Heidi? Isn't she at home? She was out with you. What have you done with her? I left her in the meadow. I thought she'd gone home when I couldn't find her. Ow! Let me go! Meyer is expecting us. What name? If you just say that Data is here with the child. This way. Oh, Tina, tell Fräulein Rottenmeier the uh, person with the child is here. Help him in the dining room. And don't touch. Heidi, it's very rude to stare. We expected you an hour ago. Was the train late? Good heavens, is this the child? How old is she? I'm not exactly sure as to her age, madam, I'm but... I'm nine years old. My grandfather said so. He wouldn't know how old you were. She doesn't look more than nine. Really, this is most tiresome. Herr Sesemann asked me to find a companion for his daughter. Clara is now almost twelve. Well, the child is old for her years. Very bright and intelligent. I'm sure Fräulein Clara would get on excellently with her. Come here, child. What is your name? Heidi. That's not a Christian name. What were you christened? Christened? What name were you given at your baptism? I don't remember my baptism. Is the child simple or just pert? If Madame will allow me, perhaps I can speak for her. She is neither simple nor pert. She just speaks as she means. She was christened Adelheid after her mother, my late sister. At least Adelheid is a Christian name. But I'm still astonished to see so young a child. Clara wants someone to share her lessons with her. Oh, you'll find her very willing to learn, I'm sure. What have you learned already, Adelheid? I've learned how to milk a goat. Milk a goat? And Grandfather taught me all sorts of other things. Like why the mountains go pink in the sunset. Pink mountains? Whatever next? What books have you studied? Won't be any use in me having books. I can't read. Is it possible? Can't read? This is not at all the sort of child I was led to suppose. How could you bring such a child to us? If Madame will allow me, she is exactly as I described her to my mistress. She passed on what I said to Herr Sesemann, and I was instructed to fetch the girl here immediately. Now, I really must go, for my mistress will be waiting for me. You can't just leave her here. If Madame will permit, I shall come again soon and see how she's getting on. One moment. I have been two days fetching her. And my mistress will be missing me. Come back! Do you hear? Come back! The child is quite unsuitable! Push it, will you push? Would you rather be called Heidi or Adelheid? I'm always called Heidi. Then I shall call you Heidi. It suits you. Come in. It's not a name I've heard before, but then I've never seen a child like you before either. Have you always had that curly hair? I think so. Are you glad to come to Frankfurt? No, but it's only a visit. I'll be going home tomorrow, I expect. You've been sent to keep me company. For good, I thought. For good? Now I must go home, or Grandfather and Peter will be worrying. You are a funny child. Now that she We're in here. That 
woman has just walked away and left you. We were told you were Clara's age. It really is insupportable. I shall have to write to Herr Sesemann at once. Is there a room made ready for the child? It only wants dusting. Then dust it and tell Sebastian to serve dinner. The sooner this day is over, the better. My mother said and my father's away most of the time. So Fraulein Rottenmeier is paid to look after me. I'd have sent her to school soon enough. And I love her. Will they? We all love her. Fetch her back, Johan. We all need her. Are you hungry? Oh, yes, very. What's your favourite supper? Toasted cheese. Ugh. You won't get any of that here, I hope. Well, sit down. There's your place. White bread. Yes. For me, of course. Have you washed, young lady? No. You should always wash before meals. Where do I wash? Well, never mind now, or goodness knows how long you'll be. Sebastian, Adelheid hasn't got a role. No, she has, madam. For what we are about to receive, may the good Lord make us truly thankful. Have you never heard grace said, child? No. child, Sebastian. For goodness sake. Did you know you look like a friend of mine? Peter, he's called. He's much younger, of course. Eat your soup. Hide. Where's Sebastian going to sit? Sebastian doesn't eat with us, Heidi. Aren't you hungry, Sebastian? Sebastian is a servant. He waits on us. You may leave the soup, Sebastian. I'll ring for you. Uh, yes, madam. And your table manners. You eat soup like this. Hold your spoon this way. Understand? She put it in her pocket. Two of them. I'm telling you. Shh. And another thing. Half an hour before meal times, you retire to your room to wash and make yourself presentable. You then come down to the study next door and wait for Seba Adelheid. I do declare the child's asleep. Have no fear, Fräulein. I rather look forward to starting with the basic rudiments of learning once again. You will have to start with the alphabet. And what will Clara do then? Clara can help me to teach her. She's your pupil, not your assistant. To teach yourself is often a good way to learn. And making Clara feel useful will give her that confidence she so needs. No, no, the arrival of this child could be just what she wants. The arrival of this child is a disaster, Professor. I am relying on you to help me. Well, I will do my best to bring the child up to Clara's standards. I mean, I am relying on you to tell me that the child's presence at lessons will only hold Clara back. <coughs> and unless she's removed, you cannot be responsible for the young lady's education. A bit higher. It looks like a ladder. Yes, but it should only have one rung. Grandfather has a ladder for mending the roof. <coughs> a is for apple. Or oh, arm. Alm, like the mountain. Well, arm, arm. Argue. Hmm? Aggravate. Head. Hmm? Ascent. Ardor. Aspire. Atmosphere. X. X. Show her how to draw a B, Clara. B for bread. Say, bread. White bread. Well, the colour is immaterial. Red. B. 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 And the goats make that sound with their lips when they're being milked. 
Yes, well, never mind the goats. See if you can draw a bee. It's time you went for your rest. Take Fräulein Sesamon to her room. What's yes, Heidi going to do? Will you stop using that ridiculous name? She was christened Adelheid. And what is good enough for God is surely good enough for us. Now go to your room. <laughs> Clara always has to rest in the afternoon, and it would be as well if you did the same. I have a letter to write, and I do not wish to hear a sound until five o'clock. At that hour, you may come to the study and amuse Clara till dinner time. She has not had a cod liver oil again. Clara! Clara! Sebastian? Why do you ask that? Fräulein Roddenmeyer says I can only give you orders. I don't know what she means. Well then, what do you want to order me to do, Fräulein? Why do you call me Fräulein? My name's Heidi. Because Fräulein Roddenmeyer says I must only call you Fräulein. And we all have to do what she says, I suppose. Of course. So, what's your order? I want to open the window in my room. So I can look out and see the mountains. I doubt you can see a mountain from there. You'd have to go to the top of that church tower there even to see down the valley. Then I doubt if you'd see a mountain. Is it possible to go up that church tower? Well, if you ask the caretaker. Perhaps Tanette can take you one day, on her afternoon off. Would Fräulein Rottenmeyer allow that? If she's in a good mood. Which isn't very often. I suppose so, miss. Get her, will you? I want to teach her dominoes. Tanette can answer the door. Well, I might as well since I'm here. I want you to get Heidi. All right, miss. I can't get her, can I? You were quite right. Nothing to see but rooftop. Where on earth have you been? Up the church tower. You said the caretaker would take me. He was very kind. Who got that? Give me there quick. Another word to the housekeeper about where you've been. It was just a street trader, madam. I sent him packing. You've been out. Sebastian thought if I went up the church tower, I might be able to see a mountain. But you can't. It's all rooftops. You've been up the church tower on your own? An old man took me. Said he was a caretaker. A stranger? He was very nice. A bit like my grandfather in some ways. He took me to see his cat. She has six lovely kittens. And do you know what? He's given them all to us. The kittens? Yes. Oh, how lovely. But where will we keep them without old Rottermeyer seeing them? Doesn't she like them? Is that him bringing them now? Have a look, Heidi. What do you want? Fee Phoenix. Oh, do you now? Well, the little girl had to find her way home. I showed her. I wish I could go up the church tower. There's nothing to look at. It's all rooftops. I hardly even go out, except for when Papa is here, and that isn't often. It's not like being up a mountain. I've never even seen a mountain. Oh, but you must. You must come and see my mountain with Peter and me and see the great bird flying so high in the sky and the peaks all aflame in the sunset. 
see who it is, Heidi. It might be the gentleman with the kittens. Go on, away with you. Not till I get my three phoenix. Go on, get out! No, let him come in. He's quite right. Come in. I lost my way. So I told him I lived at the house with the dog's head on the door. And he said he'd show me the way if I gave him three phoenix. Have you got three phoenix? No, I've not. Now get out. I have. Bring him in, Heidi. No, wait. Who is it now, Sebastian? Get in there, quick. That's the third time there's been a knock at the door. Yes, madam, it was that street trader again. This time I really sent him away with a flea in his ear. Where's Adelheid? Oh, she, she's in the study with Clara. I should think they're perfectly happy there till dinner time now. Just as long as there are no more disturbances like we had this morning. Whatever's that? That? A hurdy girl. Oh, oh, yes, madam, it's in the street. That's not coming from the street. Uh, well, I'll see to it. You answer the door. He brought Heidi back from the church tower, so we asked him to play. A street urchin in this house. He, he said he'd show me the way home if I gave him three phoenix. You've been out. Well, I forgot all about it when I came. Leave this house this instant. Not till I get my money. Sebastian, come here. He's doing no harm. Can't he play to us again? It'll cost you another three phoenix. Get this ragamuffin out of here. Go on, lad. What have you got there, Sebastian? The uh, section that the church just delivered, it, it, it's for Heidi. It's the kittens. It's the kittens. It must be open. Kittens? Oh, be careful, Caroline Rottenmeyer. Tortoise, you might hurt him. It won't bite. He keeps it in his pocket. Oh, aren't they sweet? Cats! Oh, no, they're dancing. They're dancing to the music. You know, you're, you're lucky she didn't lock you in the cellar yesterday. She would have done if Clara hadn't spoken up for you. Are there cheeses in the cellar? Are there what? Grandfather keeps his cheeses in the cellar, and it's lovely and cool down there in the summer. It's a horrid cellar here, full of cobwebs, beetles and lizards. You have lizards here? Just stay in your room and make no more trouble. The child is certainly not lacking in intelligence. She hasn't even learnt her letters. Considering she has had but the two mornings trying to, she's not done too badly. No, I have no doubt that once she has mastered the rudiments, she'll very soon catch up with Fräulein Clara. The distance, after all, is not such a great one to travel. Well, do your best then. But I've no doubt that on receipt of my letter, Herr Sesemann will come at once to judge the situation for himself. And when he hears about the events of yesterday... Cats, Professor! and a tortoise, and a street urchin with a hurdy-gurdy. He will hardly consider the child a fit companion for his daughter after that. Fräulein Clara will be very sorry if she goes. Fräulein Clara does not have the running of this house. I will show you out, Professor. not expressly order you to keep to your room. She is incapable of grasping the simplest instructions. What escapade have you in mind today? Another stroll up the tower and looking like a tramp into the bargain in that frightful hat. I'm not strolling anywhere. I'm just going home. This is your home. What are you talking about? My home's on the mountain with Grandfather. And even Data said I could go home whenever I liked. The train goes as fast as the wind, she said. And if I didn't like it in Frankfurt... Not like it? Have you ever in your life had a house like this to live in? Servants to wait on you, good food, a comfortable bed, a distinguished professor to coach you in your studies? Not like it? No. You are a wicked, ungrateful child who deserves to be whipped. Get up to your room this instant. I must go home. <gasps> if Herr Sesame were to hear of this, running away from his house, what would he say? I must go home. I've been here too long. Grandfather will be getting all grumpy again. Peter will be beating Greenfinch because I'm not there to stop him. And his grandmother will have no one to talk to. 
Here you can't even see the sun say goodnight to the mountains. And if the great bird were to fly over Frankfurt, he'd croak even louder at so many silly people living on top of each other and making themselves wicked. She's out of her mind. Sebastian, Tillette, we inspect the doctor. Have you ever heard such raving? How can we visit you all again, Mrs. Stop! There is only one place for a wicked, ungrateful child like you. You are coming with me. What? Whatever's that? Bread rolls. Bread rolls. They're only the ones left over at meals. I've been collecting them for my grandmother. She can't afford white bread. And if she doesn't get some soon, she may die. Give me that hat. Burn it. And the bread. Get rid of it, Tinette. No, they're for Peter's grandmother. You, young lady, are coming with me. Come along. See? Blind, blind. The rolls could make us see again. Please don't take them away. Please. Yes, Susan. What do you hear of this? Run. <laughs> You will stay in here as a punishment for your wickedness, and you keep quiet, do you hear? If you make a sound or give me any more trouble, I shall come back and I shall lock the door. I'm afraid the housekeeper's out at the moment, so she, she went to post a letter. Probably to me if I know her. What's it all about, Sebastian? Rottenmeier seems very upset. Papa! Papa! And how is my beautiful daughter? Mm -hmm. Are you taking your cod liver oil and doing everything the doctor told you? Yes. And how are your lessons coming on? Oh, Papa, will you stay for ages this time? A few days only, I'm afraid. But Sebastian, bring the small case in here. Yes, sir. Only a few days? Well, I shouldn't really have come at all. But I've been receiving such alarming letters from Fraulein Rottenmeier. Where is the little Swiss girl, anyway? Fräulein Rottermeier sends her to her room after lunch. She's not to come down till five o'clock. Is she so naughty? She's not naughty at all. Go and fetch her, Sebastian. Oh, yes, Papa, she's such fun. Well, she doesn't amuse Fräulein Rottenmeier. I know that. But let's see what we have here. For a beautiful young lady. Oh, Papa, it's lovely. Come on. Pay your respects to Herr Sessiman. Down you go. So you get on quite well with the little Swiss, then? Of course I do. No quarrelling, no ill temper. Heidi never loses her temper. Fräulein Rottenmeier thinks she's a bad influence on you. There's nothing bad about Heidi. Running off up the tower, bringing animals into the house, not to mention a street urchin with a hurdy-gurdy. Oh, Papa, please don't send her away. Since she came, there's been something exciting every day. It was so dull before. She tells me of her life on the mountain with her grandfather. I wish I could climb a mountain one day. Do you think I ever will? Yes, I'm sure. One day. Come in. Fräulein Adelheid, sir. Adelheid? I thought your name was Heidi. Yes, it is. But if you wish to call me Adelheid, I'll try to be attentive to it. What do you mean? Fräulein Rottenmeier calls me Adelheid, and I do try to remember she means me. I wonder why she calls you Adelheid if your name is Heidi. Come over here. Let me take a look at you. Are you happy here? Yes. I'm sure. Yes. Very well, then. Now, tell me, both of you. There's one question that puzzles me. What's that, Papa? Whatever became of those kittens? Fräulein Rottermeier told Sebastian to get rid of them. Oh, and how did you do that, Sebastian? Did you drown them? Well, drown I... them? No, he's no, got them. Sebastian. <laughs> the master's here. Herr Sesemann. He arrived nearly an hour ago. Oh, good gracious, and I was up. Where is he? In the study. Oh, yes. well. I Herr Sesemann, I, I didn't know you'd arrived. Oh, Fräulein Rottenmeier. As you see, I bought the children a present. <laughs> Please don't look so alarmed. Sebastian can look after them in the kitchen. And whenever you are safely in your sitting room, he can bring them to the children to play with. <laughs> They're new ones. Sebastian destroyed the others, I understand. I thought he had. 
Come with me, Rottenmeier. I believe we have things to discuss. If only he didn't have to go back so soon. Well, at least we don't have to pretend about the kittens anymore. The child is a disrupting influence. This was a well-ordered household until she came. If you knew what she'd been up to... You told me in your letter. At length. Besides, she wants to go home. She'll soon get over that if she's treated with love and kindness. So she'll be here tomorrow, my grandmama. I didn't know you had a grandmother. Can't you see? She can see very well. Why should she not? The only grandmother Heidi knows is blind. I wish I could have got her the white bread. You can take her all the white bread you want to when you do go. Can't you, Papa? Yes, certainly. Is the carriage here? Yes, sir. All right, goodbye, children. Now my mother will stay at least two weeks if you behave yourselves and don't annoy her. Goodbye, Vanir. I'll come again as soon as I can. Goodbye, Heidi. Look after those kittens for me, won't you? Bye-bye. I'll throw over. I'm sorry my visit is so short. But I think if you'll remember our conversation the other day, you will find everything will run more smoothly from now on. You'll like my grandmama just as much as yours, even more. Shut the door, I want to wave goodbye. You'll catch cold. No, please. This was your class, Professor. Lessons are over for this morning. Yes, gracious lady. Um, <clears throat> well, it is still a little early, but... I wish to talk to Heidi. Yes, yes. Show your Professor out, Clara. Oh, there is no need to trouble Clara. Clara is the daughter of this house. And... Wheelchair or no wheelchair, she is quite capable of seeing her professor to the door. Aren't you, Clara? Yes, Grandmama. Let the child do it, Professor. Yes, gracious lady. Uh, good day, gracious lady. Now, Heidi, so Peter is always right, is he? Yes. And it would distress you very much to find out that he might sometimes be wrong. And if you learned to read, then he would be wrong, wouldn't he? Which is why, why you don't try. I just know I can't. The only reason you can't read, Heidi, is that you don't want Peter to look foolish. Now, Peter is wrong about many things. No! So are you. So is Clara. So is your teacher. Frequently. The professor! So, on occasion, am I. But not about this. Can your grandfather read and write? Yes. Has he sent you a letter while you have been here? He just knows I can't read. Which is why he doesn't write. Well, even if I could, he still wouldn't know. Yes, he would. Because you could write and tell him. Now, here are all the stories of the Bible. I could read them all when I was your age. Have a look at the pictures. Oh, look, there's a man with a goat. Would you like to know the story of that picture, Heidi? Oh, yes, please, gracious lady. I'll read it to you. In your room this afternoon, while Clara is having her rest. And, Heidi, regardless of anything you may have been told, I would like you to call me Grandmama. Just as Clara does. And the son said, Father, I have sinned before heaven and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring the best dress and put it on him and kill the fatted calf so that we may eat and be merry. For this my son who was dead is alive again. He was lost and is found. Oh, isn't that a beautiful story, Heidi? Oh, yes, Grandma. May I look at the pictures again? It shows that however wicked or foolish we are, God still loves us. And if we truly repent, he will forgive us and make us happy. Would you like that book as a present, Heidi? Oh, yes, please, Grandma. 
Well, when you can read it, you shall have it for your very own. Fräulein, Fräulein, it is truly wonderful. Doors won't open on their own, Sebastian. Forgive me. Forgive me, Fräulein. But no one cognizant of what has gone before would believe it. That child, Adelheid, well, Heidi, as we call her now, Heidi, that child who, notwithstanding all my efforts, was until recently unable even to comprehend the alphabet... Yes, yes, Professor. She has begun to read. Oh, is it not good for the toiler in the vineyard to glimpse at last the fruits of his labour? And he said, give me that poor portion. portion, which is mine. And he took it and went to a far country, country and spent it all. Very good. You're making excellent progress, Heidi. Soon the book shall be yours. And soon I can write to Grandfather and ask him to help me. You are still asking God, I hope. Not anymore. Why not? It didn't do any good. I can understand with so many other people praying. He just can't answer them all. Of course he can. You know what it is I pray for, don't you? Yes, Heidi. I know. And it will come, my child. It will come. It was all in white. It was up here on the landing. You imagine it. I tell you, it was a ghost. Oh, rubbish. And there was this cold draft blowing all around me. Now, it always gets cold when you see ghosts. The only reason you felt cold last night, Tina, was that Sebastian here not only forgot to lock up, but left the door open. I think not, madam. I came down at two o'clock in the morning to fetch the children's Bible that I wanted to leave by Heidi's bedside. The door was wide open. Anybody could have got in. I must go, children. My carriage is here. May we see you go? You may not. You will continue with your lessons. I can't bear goodbyes. Gracious lady. Grandmama, I wanted to come to your room this morning when I found the big book. But Fräulein Rottenmeier told me I mustn't disturb you. Is it really for me? Now that you can read, it's for your very own. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't thank me, child. At least, not only me. You promise? Yes, Grandmama. Every night. It certainly was not Frau Sessemann. In her nightgown, a white dress, you said? Well, Frau Sussman is hardly to be mistaken for a ghost, whatever she's wearing. And it does not explain the front door being open. We're haunted! Quiet, Tinette. And not a word of this to the children. They'll be difficult enough as it is with Frau Sussman gone. I shall write to the master. He will tell us what needs to be done. Satisfied? Windows too? Everywhere. <gasps> no! No! It's the master! You lock up early, don't you? You weren't expecting anyone, sir. Not even a ghost. Evening, Rottenmeyer. Uh, I'll just go and dress. You look quite respectable as you are. Light the lamps in the cellar for us. Are the children in bed? Uh, an hour ago. See if they're not disturbed. W will you be staying the night, sir? We both will. Right, I see in the room. study with the door open to the hall so we can catch this intruder of yours red-handed. Going, Glasser. <laughs> Are you sure this is not some sort of joke, Sebastian, on the housekeeper? Certainly not, sir. Then why the devil didn't you wait up yourself one night instead of bringing me all the way back here? Afraid of a so-called ghost? Shame on you. Well, we'll know tomorrow how a ghost looks in daylight. Every morning the front door is found open. I never thought ghosts had to open doors. I thought they walked through them. <laughs> it is no laughing matter, Dr. Clarsen. The maid has seen it. It points to some 
terrible tragedy which must have taken place in this house. Why are you casting aspersions on my ancestors, Rottenmeyer? Go and make those sandwiches. And a flask of hot coffee. I met Dr. Clarkson on the train. He very kindly offered to keep watch with me. You know, the least I could do. But I showed my old friend your letter, you see. Well, we shall see tonight if there is any substance in it. It's a long time since I saw Clara. How is she? The same, as far as I can see. Would there be any point in your examining her again? If you'd like me to. Would there be any point? If not, you just raise her hopes for nothing. Well, as I've told you, hers is a curious kind of paralysis. I'm sure there's nothing organically wrong. Well, the child could walk well enough at one time. Clara can't even remember those days. Does she talk of her mother yet? To Clara, her mother is dead. It's better she should think so. I've not disillusioned her. And yet she was there the day your wife left you. She saw her leave. Ran down the stairs after her, fell down and couldn't get up. Now, I often wonder what you might have been saying at that time. As if I'd know that. Does it matter? Or was she afraid that you, too, perhaps, might leave her? Now, if only you could live with her here, Wilhelm. My business is in Holstein. Or take Clara there. You've said yourself the damp air could be dangerous. Now, I sometimes wonder if all she really needs is love. She has it. On her own in Frankfurt. And that's why I got her a good companion. A delightful child called Heidi. Clara gets all the love she needs from Heidi. They play together, study together. The change in Clara since the little Swiss came. You must see her tomorrow, Carson. Well, let's hope this child doesn't leave her too, then. What's that? In the hall. Heidi! It could be fatal to wake her too suddenly. But she's going out. No, this is more my province than yours. Can I help you, child? Are you lost? It's the goats. I can hear them bleating. They must be lost and hungry. Well, they're sound asleep in the warm. Or wouldn't you like to be? They were bleating. And if no one finds them... I'm sure they'll be found. Now, come indoors. It's such a wind on the mountains tonight. It's too cold to be out in nothing but your nightgown. Who are you? You're not my grandfather. No, I'm a doctor. I wanted to take some bread, but there wasn't any in the basket. There never is. She wasn't like this a month ago. Lack of sleep and lack of food. <clears throat> Where's her room? At the top of the house, I'll show you. No, I can manage. There's light enough. Can you bring hot milk? I hear the wind in the pines. And I worry about little brown bear and black swan. I hear them bleating, so I jump up to go and find them. But when I get out there, I can't find the goats anywhere. And I want to take them bread. Who's that for grandmother? And I'm lost, and I don't know where I am, so I have to come back in. Have you ever woken on the doorstep as you did tonight? Was I on the doorstep? I thought I was on the mountain. Have you any pain? Only in my throat, like a big lump that wants to buzz, but I don't let it. Because Fräulein Rottmeier told me I mustn't cry. So you swallow it down, is that the way of it? <laughs> but it uh, has to come out somehow. Oh, if only I could see them all again. Peter and the goats and grandfather. <laughs> oh, look, come, child. Don't hold it back. Cry. Cry as much as you like. Give in to it. Do you good. It's the most appalling case of homesickness I've ever encountered. Bolt the doors and she'll be out through the windows next time on the roof. 
But you said you could prescribe something. No, I can. The prescription is only three words. Send her home. But, my daughter, you said yourself that if Heidi leaves her... You've other responsibilities now, Wilhelm. There's only one remedy for that child. Return her to her grandfather. Today, as soon as she wakes up. Jeanette's dressing Clara now, sir. She'll be down in a moment. Good. Shall I, um, shall I bring the trunk in here, sir? Yes, please. She hasn't enough to fill a trunk here, says I'm she shall not leave my house as naked as she came. Fetch whatever belongings she does have and any clothes that Clara has grown out of. But don't wake, Heidi, yet. The longer she sleeps after last night, the better. <clears throat> the train leaves for Basel at nine o'clock, Sebastian. From there you get another to a place called Meyerfeld. There's bound to be an inn there where you can stay the night and in the morning find some conveyance to take you on to Dorfley. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Papa! When did you come? After you went to bed last night. What's happening? I've never been woken so early before. What's that trunk doing there? Go and help Fraulein Rottenmeier. Are we going away? The trunk surely for a journey. Clara, I have something to say that is going to distress you. I must ask you to be very brave. So if you love her, as I know you do, you'll want her to have what's best for her, won't you? Now, I'm going to ask you to be braver still. Heidi knows how much you need her, which is why she never wanted to tell you how desperately she yearned for the mountain. So she kept it locked inside her, torn between her love for you and her love for her grandfather. That's what made her ill. So when you come to say goodbye, Oh, Papa, must you really go today? Yes, Clara. And you must wish her Godspeed and not cry too much and make her feel unhappy at leaving you. Will you promise that for me? Yes, Papa. Uh, I, knew, I knew you would. But, but will I ever see her again? Oh, I'm sure you will. If Dr. Clarsen thinks you're well enough, well, it might be possible for you to visit her one day. Climb a mountain? Oh, Papa, I could never climb a mountain! My child, you promised to be brave. Ah, oh, you are awake then. You slept on a bit, didn't you? It's gone eight. Where are my clothes? You're to wear this today. Do you like it? Present from Clara. It's locked. Ah, there's a good pair of shoes for you over here too. I don't need those. Oh, yes, you do today. Because you and I are going on a journey. They're still warm. Straight from the oven, so they'll be nice and fresh when she gets them. Is it really true? Am I going home? We packed a shawl for the grandmother. It belonged to my grandmama. And some tobacco for your grandfather. For that big curly pipe you told me about. Will he like that? Oh, yes. Well, don't be late, then. <laughs> Watch out if you don't want any trouble. Haven't seen you for a time. Get my provisions. Tobacco, too. Look sharp about it. Well, good afternoon, neighbor. Don't I even get a greeting these days? Good afternoon, then. Your hand, this bitterness of heart can only cause you pain. I didn't come down to the village to listen to sermons, Pastor. Usual wait. Do you want me to credit it to you or pay you? Credit. You've a lot of credit. I don't need money. I passed your old house just now. You should take a look at it twice, do I hear? Why? Unless some repairs are effected soon, it will fall down and the rats run everywhere. Maybe they need a home here more than I do. I live on the mountain. But if you were to live down here again amongst your own people, as you did with your son Tobias... My own people? They would still take you to their hearts again. Good afternoon, Pastor. Such an unhappy man. Arrogant old fool. 
He has had a hard life, Hans. Who hasn't? said she found such a nice place for you. Yes, it was very nice. But I couldn't stay there forever, could I? Now I really must rush, or the sunset will be here before I can get to Grandfather. You're not thinking of going back there. Come on, Snowflake. Heidi, wait. He's worse than ever. Even Peter keeps out of his way now as he gets that stick across his back. Who's that? It's me! Don't play tricks on me, Peter. It's not Peter. Putting on that voice. It's Heidi, Grandmother. They took Heidi away. Last summer it was, or the summer before. So long ago. I'm back, Grandmother, and I'm never going away again. Not ever. You must know it's me. Oh, my child. The same curly hair. Can it really be? Heidi! It is you! Oh, I thought I saw you on the path, but I couldn't believe it. How did you get here? Sebastian brought me on the train. Sebastian? He's very kind, but he's afraid of the mountains. So when we got to Mainfeld, and the man with the cart said he was going to Dorfley... Is she well, Brigitta? How does she look? She's got just the same dress on she used to wear. <laughs> She looks well enough. I thought Grandfather might not know me in Clara's dress, so I took it off on the cart and put my old one on. <laughs> in the trunk, there are so many presents. Oh. And Grandmother, do you know what this is? Huh? Oh, bread, is it? White bread. Oh. White rolls. <laughs> and there are more than 20 of them, so you'll not have to eat black bread for a long time. And when these are gone, I'm sure Clara will send us some more if we ask her. They'll make you strong again, won't they? Oh, my child, it is you that will make me strong again. Every day I have prayed that I would hear your voice once more. And now my prayers have been granted. Now I must go to my grandfather. He's been his old grumpy self again ever since you left, Heidi. Not a kind word to anyone. But now that Heidi is back, who knows, Brigitte? I'll come again tomorrow. Bye, Grandmother. Goodbye, my child. Fancy her bringing the rose. She didn't forget us then. Perhaps tomorrow I might be able to do a little spinning, Brigitte. <laughs> you feel better, do you? Much better. <sighs> Goats? Back at their homes. I've just come up from Dorfley. I've been looking for the eagle's nest. Sometimes I thought I heard the goats, and once in my lesson, a carriage went by and I thought I heard the wind in the pines. Tell me about Frankfurt. I must go to Grandfather. Oh, but will you come out with the goats again? Every day if Grandfather will let me. Heidi! Are you really home? Of course I am. Grandfather! I'm back! 
sent you away. Is that it? No, I just wanted to come home. They might have dressed you up a bit. You had that on when you left. How long would you be able to stay? For good, of course. Why are you so cross? Do they know that you're here? They packed a big trunk for me. It's in the baker shop in Dorfley. Can we go and get it tomorrow? They're not going to take you away? No. Oh, Grandfather, aren't you pleased to see me? <laughs> so you come back to your grandfather, is you? Oh. <sighs> if you look thin and pale to me, what have they been feeding you on? Never mind, we'll feed you up. Very soon. Do you think you can get some of that old goat's milk down you? I suppose they've been feeding you cow's milk in Frankfurt. Yeah. Mm. It's the nicest milk in all the world. At least they haven't spoiled you. That's something. May I go and see my bed? What? It's still there, isn't it? You wouldn't want to sleep on hay now after what you've been used to. Feather mattresses and all. And three pillows. The best part of Frankfurt, that dirty woman said. Smart house, servants. <laughs> How do we open it? They wouldn't have locked it. Oh, let me. Oh, I bet they didn't think about lugging it up the mountain when they packed it. <laughs> A great deal of lugging you did. <laughs> this must be the shawl they said was for grandmother. But you gave me the rolls. This is for you, too. Oh. It was Clara's grandma's. Why should she want to part with this? Feel it, Brigitte. Oh, oh, such warmth, such softness. Is this tobacco? Oh. Yes, for grandfather's big curly pipe, she said. Oh, and this, too. Herr Sesman said there was a letter in it for you. It's a bit heavy for a letter, huh? Oh, and this must be what she said was for Peter. She said it was something to eat. I told her how hungry you always were. What is it? A sausage. That thing? What a size it is. You eat it, but not all at once. I should think not. Oh, and that hat's for you, Brigitte. Oh, nonsense. They, they couldn't send me presents. It's for you. But I couldn't accept it. You could sell this in Mindfell for a good few gilden. It's for you. And this, this is for me. It is all the stories of the Bible in it. But you can't read. Yes, I can. They taught me. Oh, my child. It's not impossible at all. You were wrong. Grandmother, I can read the hymns to you now. May I get the hymn book? Fancy you being able to read. Do you hear that, Johan? Heidi can read. Well, it looks as though you didn't entirely disgrace yourself over there. Oh, I did often. What does he say? Well, that she made them all so happy. <laughs> of course. Well, child, I think it's time we started getting home. But I want to read the hymn to Grandmother. Learn to read, you see, my grandchild, just like that. Put you to shame, huh? <laughs> If for a while it seems his mercy is withdrawn, that he no longer cares for his wandering child for Lord, doubt not his great compassion, his love can never tire, to those who wait in patience he gives their heart's desire. And he said, give me that portion which is mine, and he took it and went to a far country and spent it all. And when he had nothing left, he hired himself out to a master who had only swine to keep, and he had only rags to wear and the swine husks to feed on. And he thought to himself, I will go to my father and say to him, I have sinned and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Can you guess what happens next? Do you think the father is still angry and says, I told you so? Listen. The father said to his servants, bring the best dress and put it on him and kill a fatted calf. Do you think I don't know the story, child? I've heard it often enough. The father forgives and makes him happy. This my son was dead and is alive again. He that was lost is found. It's only a story. For some there's no return, no forgiveness, no father waiting. Only for those who give up. 
I wanted to come to you so much that I prayed every night, but nothing happened. So I stopped praying. But the grandmama told me if I did that, God really would forget me, and there'd be no one to help me then. But it's too late when you haven't prayed for so long. It's only in the story that the father is waiting. Believe me, a man can be a swineherd all his life. If he's too proud, I suppose. What? Too proud to turn back and say how silly he was. Isn't that what the story means? Two rolls every day and four on Sunday. Is that right? Yes, that's right. To be collected by Peter every morning when he's down here for the goat. For the old blind grandmother. She can't eat your black bread. She gives her stomach aches. Well, this should keep her in white rolls for a time. About three years, I'd say. Perhaps if there's still money left after three years. There'll be plenty left. Don't you think the three-year supply is enough to worry about now? I'll add it to what I owe you already. No, you won't. It's not mine. It's hers. Given to her by her friends in Germany. They gave her that little frock, too. What do you think of it, Hans? Looks a proper little lady in it, doesn't she? I don't think anybody paid much attention to the pastor. They were all too busy gaping at the old man. Johan went to church. Yes, in his best suit too. The one with the silver buttons down the front. And the singing. <laughs> it was the worst I've ever heard. What with everybody losing their places. They kept turning round to look at him. <laughs> Blessed are the meek. And when we came out, the miller said, you remember it was the miller who brought Heidi back from Meinfeld that yes. day. Well, he said he didn't think the old man was so bad after all. Not now he's turned back to God. A big house and servants, he said. And she left them all to come back to him. She must love him very much. And you'll be down there all winter. Grandfather's mended the house. And there's a big stove with shiny tiles all round it. And I have my own bed down there too. So I'll see you at school then, will I? Every day. If you're there, you will be, won't you? I've never been to a school before. They call me a dunce at school. I have Heidi there to show you up. You'll look even more stupid. So get down to it. This went down now to read. I can't learn to read. Would you like me to teach you? You could come to our house every night after school. And I'd teach you there. Would you like that? Yes, please. Come along, you two. Mm -hmm. Brigitte, is that you? Yes, Mother. Uh, Peter says that Heidi and Johann are back on the mountain. Yes, I know. And Peter's got the hymn book ready so she can read to me when she comes. For Dawn has something. Scattered. Peter knows it by heart. Does he? Go on, Peter. Scattered the clouds of night. <laughs> Peter is reading. Well, the Peter is reading the hymn. Oh, is it possible? Have you learned to read? The teacher said it wasn't any use asking me to read. But yesterday was the last day of school and Heidi made me stand up. I read five or six sentences from the book. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, it's a miracle. That's what the teacher said. But it was Heidi who taught me. Heidi? She's been giving me lessons every day after school at the house in Dorfley. Oh, so that's what used to keep you every day. But we wanted to keep it a surprise so I could read you one of the hymns. Grandmama went back. Heidi... Heidi, my child. Oh. Mm. Heidi, you've taught Peter to read. How did you do it? You've told them. I wanted to be here when you read. I didn't. You get so cross when I make mistakes. Oh, Peter, read us some more. 
Perhaps you'll make something of yourself after all. Read us the next verse. God's the scene around. Things great and small to his... You're leaving words out. Only the difficult ones. And with so many others, they can't be missed. But it doesn't make sense if you leave words out. Oh, never mind. That he can read any at all amazes me. Clara sent me an alphabet book to help teach his letters. It promised the most dreadful things if he didn't. If you falter at W, worst of all, look at the stick upon the wall. There never was one. But you thought there was. You won't need me to read to you now, Grandmother. Oh, but you will, won't you? You will come in every day as you used to. Of course. Oh, hi, Diana, you forgot. I met the postman in Dorfley and he asked me to give you this letter. It's from Clara. What does she say? They're coming. Oh. Oh. Dr. Clarsen thinks if I take a cure first at the spa, it might be possible for us to come on a short visit. Oh. He thinks the mountain air will be good for me. They're coming. Oh. Clara is my very best friend, Grandmother, and she's coming to stay. <laughs> oh. oh, I must go and tell Grandfather straight away. We must start getting ready. Oh, what a day of excitement it is. Johan back on the mountain, her friend from Frankfurt coming, and Peter learning to read. Go on, Peter, read us some more. One hymn's enough for one day, isn't it? But you haven't finished it. Not now. Put her down. I'm so sorry, Clara, but the path is too steep. Clara! Oh, we only got your letter this morning. Grandfather's busy making chairs for you. I'm afraid it's quite impossible, Heidi. I'm so glad you've come too, Grandmama. So far, but no further, I'm afraid. We have no choice but to go back to the village. Oh, but you must come up to Grandfather. Dearest child, it's out of the question. It's so bumpy, Heidi. Let me push. <sighs> Peter, where are you? Oh, we must get you up there somehow. We must. Grandfather, come and help us, please. Perhaps if Freud will entrust herself to an old man, take the rugs. Now I think you'll have no trouble propelling the chair. enjoyed a meal so much. Clara, do I see you eating yet another piece of toasted cheese? It tastes so good. Much better than anything we have in Frankfurt. The mountain air gives you a good appetite. I'm sure that if Clara could spend some time in it, her health would improve. Exactly what I was thinking myself. Oh, it's a pity the journey up here is so difficult. We have taken rooms in Mayenfeld. And it was my intention to drive to Dorfley every day in the carriage. But if we cannot get her up here without your capable arms to carry oh, her... Oh, but you must. She must come up here. I have so much to show her. Perhaps Clara would like to stay with us if Frau Sesemann approves. Oh, yes. Yes. To derive any real benefit, she would have to be here at least a month. A month? A whole month here? Restrain yourself, Clara. Perhaps Heidi could push you for a little while in your wheelchair while I talk to Herr Brenner. May we go to the pastures? The path isn't steep from here. I know I can manage it. Well, I think you can take it to the low pastures without fear of mishap. 
But be sure to be back when the sun is directly over the mountain. Yes, Grandfather. Should we can see if we can find the goats, Clara? This one's Snowflake. She gets into all kinds of trouble. I have to stop Peter from beating her. And that's the Great Turk. Everyone's afraid of him because he butts. Which are Black Swan and Brown Bear? Over there. Come and meet Clara, Brown Bear. Oh, isn't he sweet? Then there's Green Finch, a little bird. Hey, where are you going? They've had here long enough. The grass is too rich. Oh, don't take them away. Must you take them away? Where are you going with them? Up to the high pasture. Come, if you like. I can't get the chair up there. You know I can't. Never mind. I'll get you some flowers. I wish I could walk and run about like you. Peter weren't such a cross patch today. He'd help you get up there. I wish I could get out of my chair and pick flowers myself. Those are nothing. Up there, oh, they're the most beautiful things you could find. There are red banks of red century and yellow rock roses that cluster together in one big golden bank. Oh, you must get up there somehow, Clara, you must. Goodbye, children. Do everything that Herr Brenner tells you. And write to me, Clara, at least twice a week. I shall return one month from today. Goodbye, Go Grandmama. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Clara. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye my Bye, Bye. Grandmama. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Grandma. Peter, Bye -bye. attend to what I have to tell you. From tomorrow, I want you to let Swan and Brown Bear forage wherever they like. They have a nose for the most nourishing grasses. And however high they go, it'll do your troop no harm to keep in step with them. For the next month, I want those two to give their most nourishing milk. Do you understand? <laughs> what are you looking over there as though you want to eat somebody? I'll take the goats away. Be off with you. you could come up here just to see how lovely it is. Perhaps Grandfather could lift me. Do you think he could? Just high enough to let me peek. Is it possible, Grandfather? Take you up the steps. Just so I can see Heidi's bedroom. You would have to help. Heidi can help. You must help. Come, put your arms around my neck. Hold tight. Go on, Clara. You know you can. Can you get your knees up? I can't move my legs at all. Do try, oh. Clara. I can't. Oh, I'm afraid you suffered a defeat. Oh, no, I must see you. How am I? Well done. If only I could get you up to the high pasture. It's like a great golden carpet. And the scent, it makes you want to stay there forever and ever. It's time you children were both in bed. Grandfather? Do you think you could come out with us tomorrow, just for a little bit? You seem to manage well enough alone. I can only get the chair so far, and I do want to show Clara the high pasture. And you can take her up there and come back later, couldn't you? We'll see. Miss Heidi reading me a hymn every evening. Oh, Peter reads to you. Yes, but so many words don't seem to be there. I try to remember what they ought to be, but I lose the sense. So it doesn't come home to my heart as it does when Heidi reads them. Well, we can't expect Heidi to come up every evening while her friend from Frankfurt is there. Do you think she'll go back with them, Birgitta? To Frankfurt? I get so afraid that Heidi might leave us again.
find it anywhere. Was it here when Peter came for the goats? I can't remember. I've forgotten we'd left it outside. Well, it's not there now, so what will I do? It must have blown away in the night. Grandfather, does this mean we won't be able to go to the high pasture? It means I won't be able to go anywhere. I shan't see anything of the mountain, and I'll have to stay here till Grandmama comes to fetch me. She may as well fetch me now. Grandfather, can't you take her any further? I've got to go and look for that chair. But the high pasture's only up there. It's not very far. I do so want Clara to see it. Later. Must I sit here all day, then? Here's Peter! Do come and help us, Peter. The chair blew away in the night, and Grandfather's gone to look for it. Clara can't get anywhere without it. Please! I'm sure if Peter and I would help you, you'd at least be able to get up to where the flowers are. Here, put an arm through each of ours. That's it. Hold on tight, Peter. Now try. That's it. Can't you move your legs at all? It hurts. Do try. Good day to you, Brenner. Oh, Cesarman. We were not expecting you so soon. I've only come for a visit. Is my granddaughter well? Yes, yes, I, uh... What is the matter? Have you lost something? I'm sure you're walking. Just put your foot down firmly once. It hurts, Heidi. It'll hurt less when you've done it once. That's it. It wasn't too painful. Heidi! Heidi, let go! Take it in. And what your father will say when he gets here. Papa, he's coming here. Yes, that's what I came to tell you. He arrives at Ragat's tomorrow, and he wants to come straight here to see how you are. Don't tell him, will you? By tomorrow, I'll probably be able to walk even further. Oh, Here's Peter bringing home the goats. Heidi, go and take them from him and tell him I want to see him. Yes, Grandfather. I'm still puzzled as to what could have happened to that chair. Oh, it's of small consequence now. Look at Try to do too much, Clara. I only want to see if I can get to the back door and see Heidi tuck the goats up for the night. No, don't help me, please. There. Well, General, why are you so cross? Only someone with a guilty conscience can be as miserable as you are. Is that the way of it? I see. Is the little watchman with his gold at work on you then, Peter? Don't you know about the little watchman? The one God puts inside us to tell us when we do something wrong. He can be as sharp with us as you are sometimes with your goats. Is that what's happening to you now? Leaving you no peace at all? Hey, Peter! I only gave it a little push. I didn't mean it to break. 
it went on its own. Did it? Well, sort of. Heidi's not been out me at all since her friend came. They're together always. I'm all by myself with the goats. She doesn't come near me or anything. I didn't mean it to smash. Do you think you deserve to be punished? Yes. Peter. Now that you've confessed, the little watchman can go back to sleep again. Oh, my child. Can't you see how God brings good out of evil? Had the chair not gone the way it did, the miracle might never have happened. Hello there. My name is Sessman. May I come in? Wilhelm. Oh, I came a day early, Mother. They told me where you'd gone, so I came up after you. This, I take it, is Herr Brenner, the grandfather I've heard so much about. Uh, Wilhelm, there's been an accident. Accident? To Clara? Oh, to her chair. It smashed to smithereens. And there is the young man responsible. I didn't mean to smash it. And you are to give him a penny a week for the rest of his life. For breaking a chair? Clara can't move without that chair. How should we get her home? For the expense of providing a new one, not to mention the time it will take to obtain it. Transporting it up here. Hello, I really. Hello. Oh, my darling girl! Oh. Oh. So you're not going away with them, then? Of course not. Clara is to stay another month until she's really strong. And then perhaps I'll go and stay with them in the winter for a week or two. Did you really think I was going back to stay with them? I thought that was why you taught Peter to read. And he reads so badly. Oh, he'll soon get better. No doubt it would be the best thing for you, I said, but... I felt I could scarcely survive it. I wouldn't want anything of the best if you could scarcely survive it, Grandmother. Oh. <laughs> Here they are. Who? Peter and Clara. I ran on ahead, but Clara walked all the way. Is and this the young lady who gave me the shawl? Yes. Oh, we can go to the high pasture now. And Peter says he'll show us oh. both the eagle's nest. <gasps> and Grandmother, I... I told Frau Sesman how uncomfortable your bed was. And she's going to send you mine. Yours? The one I slept in at Frankfurt. <gasps> and the three pillows. Three pillows? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to those who wait in patience, he gives their heart's desire. Thank mm -hmm. you. 